Okay, we are back. I'm Jeff Rents. That's R-E-N-S-E, and the website is Rents.com. If you haven't been there, please stop by, pay us a visit. I think you'll find your time to be uh, most interesting there. Michael Tassarian is my guest this evening. We're talking about his book, Atlantis, Alien Visitation and Genetic Manipulation. I mean, one of the biggest questions, man, right there at the top, is how did the phenomenon of evil come into our world and into the consciousness of so many human beings. Now, I, I think it's pretty much a given, Michael, if we take the average man or woman and sit down with them, the average human, we will come to terms on most of the basic crucial issues, the golden rule and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Somehow, something happens when the masses get together and the controllers start to work. Evil. Was it always on the planet? Well, this is the whole thing that is central to my work, and the answer is no, it was not. The forces of religion and the forces of science have set about cornering the market on the question of evil and saying to us that, uh, you know, they're going to give us the answer, and after 2,000 years, they've made things infinitely worse. These individuals should be given the pink slip. I mean, in the preface of the book that you were reading earlier, it says there that you know, the institutions of religion and science have been the worst perpetrators of evil we've ever had to endure on this planet. We need to then, you know, look elsewhere for the solution. And a lot of people think, well, wait a minute, if you're not going to turn to the religion, if you're not going to turn to science, you know, we're going to be left in a void there about this great question. And the answer is no, we don't. Oh, the no, ancient, no, no, no. Au ancient, contraire. Au contraire. The, the ancient legends of our own forefathers, our own ancestors, are more than happy to tell us about the origins of evil, the war of the gods, the uh, fight against light and darkness. No. It wasn't always there. It has a birthday. The concept of evil actually has a date of birth. It was because of this Nephilim intervention that, which happened. This precipitated the coming of what we call evil into the world and into the consciousness of human beings. And we are going to, if we don't answer this problem, if we put this most important question aside, okay, yes, granted, it's a philosophical question, but it also is one of the most important questions of our age. We're running around spending millions of dollars answering this and that and the other, and yet these great metaphysical meta-themes, we just leave because we believe there's no answer. And we, are going, we have inherited evil. We're passing it on to the next generation. We don't have any answers regarding this. We believe that it's just nature and evolution. Is, and it, gen- is it genetic? <laughs> it is genetic because when alien DNA was crossed with our ancestors' DNA, it created this proclivity for inhumanity and injustice that we see in the world. And it's not just Mother Nature who's in perfect balance from the greatest neutron star to the smallest atom that is in perfect equilibrium could then suddenly make such a blunder in our highest species, the human race. It's an absolutely preposterous idea. But again, it's another cover-up. Divide and conquer. Yeah, it's very, very important that uh, to realize that this has an origin also and that we do the remarkably horrific, sadistic, violent, in- unjust things to one another. And we, even if we don't act it out, we, we, then we do have the inner moral quandary about what kind of way we're going to live and the whole private war. This private war is the war in the blood. It's the war of the genes inside, the two type, the two persons that we have within ourselves that the Arthurian tradition talks about as the red dragon and the white dragon that's forever in conflict. You know, the twins. Good. The, yin, yin, yang. Yes, it's all, all there. Exactly. All mythology is filled with it. And then we, because we have this, uh, the remption, because we have the schizogenic, excuse me, because we have the schizoid, uh, um, problem inside ourselves genetically, then we create a schizogenic society. The mind, which is already in dualism, the mind, which is already split, we have emotions divided from the intellect, we have the uh-huh. body divided from the soul, whatever. All these divisions, we, we have gender divisions inside ourselves that Carl Jung was so beautiful to bring out. But then this perceiving mind then inevitably perceives devils and gods outside of itself. It's not that they exist, it's that we have put them there because the human race is in a terrible existential schism, which can be summed up as the term evil. And Well, you see, long ago, they were already, um, one of the pieces of disinformation exists. See, this uh, hybridization program happened on Atlantis. And when people rebelled against the warlocks of Atlantis, they moved to Lemuria, which was another famous continent that existed at that time. And they set up a high culture, a high civilization. And on that civilization, before it was drowned under the waves, they did try to breed out this uh, particular proclivity. And, but, of course, that was... Uh, that program was defeated because the world well, suffered you know, a pole shift. Another name for that is eugenics, isn't it? Yes, it is. The racial hygiene. There was an idea to 
And it, it, through the centuries, there has been attempts to sort of breed it out, to suppress it, and to also change change the way things are so that we will again live in a moral and uh, paradisical place. But, of course, we have a tremendous the force for negativity out there that has anything but that desire for us, and they are leading us to the roads of perdition. They've not only tampered with our DNA. I mean, what we're talking about legal sovereignty being broken and, and state sovereignty being demolished, which is one of the greatest uh, crimes that we could imagine. That's true. But think that your own DNA has been interfered with, the human DNA of our ancestors. What more of a violation, what more of a rape could that be? Couldn't be. Yeah, so we need to know about this. Yeah. And again, when you turn to the ancient sources, they are talking about this. They called it the fall. The real, the real fall, the real biting of the apple of the tree of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. was originally to do with the human DNA. And when they say that Adam was sent out naked into the garden, that's just referring to intellectual nakedness, not physical nakedness. It's intellectual dumbing down that the Adamic race was put into the world, you know, in a naked state where they would not be able to access the centers of higher intelligence and mm -hmm. higher spirituality. whole question of evil if we just believe that mother nature brought it about then isn't it as good as saying that mother nature is in some way flawed or mother nature is in some way ignorant and then that of course becomes the perfect justification for our ecocide for the murder of animals for the destruction of our planet you know they have instilled in us some very very pernicious lies that need to be revisited again we need to give a pink slip to the to the you know the enclaves of religion and science because they're not they haven't answered the question in fact they've created more evil than we can even imagine that exists on this planet than we can even imagine than we can um, even imagine do you know true. that this yeah, one interesting thing is that the, when the nephilim came here about fifty thousand years ago in the bible as it says in the book of enoch they did originally try uh, before they actually tried to do the genetic um, manipulation of us they tried to mate with the women and it didn't work. Here's a quote from the uh, Ethiopian ancient book from Ethiopia called the Kebra Nagast, right? Here's a small uh, mm -hmm. quote. It says, And the daughters of Cain, with whom the angels had companied, conceived. But they were unable to bring forth their children, and they died. And of the children who were in their wombs, some died, and some others came forth. Having split open the bellies of their mothers, they came forth by their navels. So here's something like out of Rosemary's Baby where these aliens first tried to mate with the women and it didn't work and these monsters were born and that's where they decided then to go to the next step and do the most taboo thing which was actually to interfere with the human DNA. Wow. And this is what originally caused the majority of our psychic uh, schizo schizophrenia basically is what you could say. Ethiopian ancient text. Yeah, an ancient text. It's just one of many texts I refer to in the book that go into this. This is, uh, again, a remarkable book. Uh, it should be read by everyone. We have Landis, Alien Visitation, and Genetic Manipulation. And we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, now, <clears throat> is the New World Order really something new? We partially answered that before, but, but uh, no. What's new is that uh, they have reared their heads and they are... They now are in control to the extent that they feel they have to play no more subtle games. They are doing it right, not only hiding in the open, but they're force-feeding people in the open. And people are not complaining much anymore. No, and they have, they have expertise of many millennia. The people that we're talking about were wealthy beyond our wildest dreams in the first centuries A.D. Mm. I have a lot of people coming to me and saying, you know, how could just some secret society just come in and, and take over, Michael? And I go, well, you know, you either haven't read the book properly or you haven't listened to what I said because I am not saying that any individual mafioso-type secret society has just walked in and taken over. Right. No, it's not like that. Mm. These individuals have created the very cities in which we live. They have created the industries in which we live. They have manipulated the history which is our history. And, and if you, if you, you, you're a friend of Jordan Maxwell, so am I. If, so, if you listen much. to Jordan, they have left their calling cards, their symbology, yes. their symbols all over the place. <laughs> Absolutely. I've done a lot of work with Jordan, and we are both very much in the same mindset yeah. that these individuals are not from this earth, that their, their end game is coming right now, very soon. Uh, it is. Like, you were right. We won't even have to wait till 2012, which is the Maya no. end date. We're no. going to see it by 2007. The person from middle America is going to be telling us. You see, I'm a, I'm, I'm, you were talking about being sort of more negative. I understand what you mean. I'm well, I, you know what? My, excuse me, but I didn't finish my thought. What I really am is a realist. Well, yeah. I was going to say, that's what it's all about is realism. Do you know something? As again, people need not be afraid. They should be actually glad that this happened because 
it's more important for a truth to come out on the surface. I mean, the whole homeopathic uh, idea is to bring the disease out in the front, in the forefront, to strengthen the immune system so that you don't get disease. Well, there's also an immune system of the intelligence. There's also an immune system of the planet Earth. There's an immune system in the psyche, the collective psyche. We need to strengthen our immune system to get rid of these pathogenic forces that have been preying over us for many millennia now. And I personally yeah. believe, uh, Jeff, and I want to really emphasize this, that these, the day of these individuals, these global tyrants, is coming. And all the saber rattling and all the machinations, they're doing it because they know that their time is short. Now, whether you buy into my philosophies about the I agree concept, with you. There's a, there is a, uh, a frenetic energy about yeah. what they're doing. They know this is their window, and if they don't take it now, they're going to lose. That's right. Now, look how old this is. Uh, Adam Weishaupt in the 1700s was the creator of the Illuminati. This is one of the most powerful secret societies in the world, for those who don't know. The Illuminati from Bavaria. Well, when he died, he passed the mantle on, and the controller of the Illuminati became a man called Giuseppe Mazzini from, from um, Italy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then he later passed it to the American uh, Albert Pike. But Giuseppe Manzini himself said something remarkable. He, this is his own quote. He said, we form an association of brothers in all points of the globe. Yet there is one unseen that can hardly be felt, yet it weighs upon us. Whence comes it? Where is it? No one knows, or at least no one tells. This association is secret even to us, the veterans of the huh. secret societies. Hmm, so, fascinating. Yeah, this is a, you, know, you know, on the dollar bill is the Illuminati symbolism that Jordan Maxwell has pointed out, the pyramid, mm -hmm. the 13 levels, and then the detached eye at the top. Mm -hmm. And both Jordan and I believe that this eye that's, at the top is that's, the that's top it, of the right? pyramid. Who are the people controlling the rest of the pyramid? That's what even Mazzini, the top of the Illuminati, is saying there is yet forces above us that are frightening to us that control even us. Remarkable. And... Uh, Certainly may well be exactly what it is, the eye up there. Uh, well, we're about to expose these individuals. I believe that the, the first time in history they've ever had a true, authentic, and proactive opposition is now. So there's no reason for people yeah. to feel pessimistic at all. Right, I agree. All right. America has bombed 250 different countries just since the, you know, the advent of the United Nations. So there's no question about that they know the, the various benefits, not just economically, but also psychologically, in order to bleed off people's frustrations that build up over time, a lot of psychic toxicity. They right. know that a good war now and again, just like good sports and good pornography, oh, yeah. is a very healthy way to, you know, an unhealthy, healthy way to get people to not look at who they really are, not do their real emotional homework. All in this just, direction, uh, all of it. Sure, of just it. believe and, in Big Daddy. And Big now, Daddy will show you how to focus all your negative energy. And now, Michael, uh, and it's tragic uh, to see what our young people are growing up in a world, a, a virtual world, a computer world, a world of, of reactive existence, uh, a world of uh, hive, of group mentality, of group think, of mm -hmm. uh, the individual is shunned. Uh, the peer pressure to keep uh, people in line is withering, and if it doesn't work with peer pressure, uh, you've got uh, the, the worldwide pharmaceutical combine mm -hmm. to medicate countless tens of millions of children into submission. That's right, and then just in, and to fill the void by giving them all sorts of stupid technical bromides, you know, yeah. cell phones and all oh, yeah. other sorts oh, of nonsense. And which will give them brain tumors, but that's another yeah, story. Yeah, but fill the void. The most important thing is stop people Always looking at it. Always keep them what they're doing, Michael, and you know it. They're bringing these kids up now and basically addicting them to an amphetamine style of life. That's whether right. it's visual, whether it's audio, whether it's friends, whether it's always in contact on the cell phone, it doesn't matter. This is a pace, it's a cadence, it is frenetic, and it is utterly, ruthlessly addictive to children.